So if you aren't aware, considering it's been a year since the second part, this is the third part in my review series of the Rugrats spin-off show All Grown Up, a series that has received a lifetime of hate from fans of the original to even the voice actors but has remained one of my absolute favourite shows for its more interesting stories, better comedy, being a more fleshed out show than you would expect from a spin-off. It's really, you know, self-contained and fully formed. It's really quite interesting and it just takes these characters in a way more interesting route than you would kind of expect. Yeah, again, for a spin-off, it is so well-rounded and it's its own show and that's pretty incredible for a spin-off. And it handles character development and growth in a really interesting way and doesn't fall into the trap of sitcoms where no one grows, no one improves or anything like that. So check out the first two parts of this series to hear my expanded thoughts on all that type of stuff. So quick recap, season one was a good season. It uh, had a bit of a problem with it. I enjoyed it, but it was in this weird kind of like transition phase where the stories, comedy and writing was very all grown up, but the art style and kind of tone of episodes was very Rugrats. It was in this weird transition phase. The show had yet to come into its own. Enter stage left, Rugrats All Grown Up Season 2. Now, Season 2 is not incredible. It has some meh episodes, but it's really interesting because it shows the proper transition from this weird hybrid thing into its own show and becoming all grown up fully and not just a Rugrats spin-off. It became its entire own entity. And that's what season two did. And it's fantastic for that. Now the show was still evolving into what it would eventually be. Season two wasn't the stop point, but it was the proper end of the weird hybrid phase. And that's really still quite interesting to me. But what about the, what about the episodes, Chester? That's what we're here for, you know, episodes. Well. There's this one episode. It's a bit complicated because it is always counted as being part of season one. Like on DVD releases, on Wikipedia, all that, it's counted as being part of season one. But it features the art style of season two and was released during the run of season two. So I'm counting it as season two, all right? It has everything that makes season two, season two. And this episode is, it is the best episode in the entire run of All Grown Up. It is the best special Nickelodeon has ever released. It is Chef's Kiss. But we'll get into that later. Kicking off the new season on a high note with the brand new art style. It's, it's a pretty fantastic episode too, but it just features a whole new art style. And what's interesting is a completely new, like, filmmaking approach, like scene composition. There's more tracking shots, transitions different, shot compositions different. It's Really interesting, whereas season one had lots more like, like, uh, <laughs> brain. The previous season featured way more like locked off shots, standard zooms, and basic transitions and all that type of stuff. This one uses more tracking shots, heaps different stuff. It's really interesting to see. It feels like this season was a lot more planned out and featured a much stronger director presence, really. So this different scene composition in turn with new art style is Fantastic. Now, I'm not saying the previous one wasn't good, it was fine. The thing is, it just felt rather same old, same old. It didn't feel unique, whereas this one feels way more all grown up. So this episode, like most of season two, features different stories branching off from the main inciting incident at the beginning of the episode. Episodes like Bad Aptitude, Is He or Isn't He, and Fear of Falling use this whole branching story method perfectly in my opinion. So you have these different stories that are brought about from a single event. For instance, getting test results back or arriving in a new location. And because you have these really different and unique characters, of course their stories are going to divert from that one event. Like that's how people are. That's how distinct characters work. They take something that is given to all the characters and they go in a different direction with it that works for their characters. But the thing that these episodes do really well is those, epi those stories come back together in time for the finale and verify those stories as being important to the overall structure of the story. Because yes, they're going on their own thing, but it becomes important and relevant to the main plot by the end and important and helpful to the other characters. It verifies the importance of that story. They're not parallel stories moving and reaching their own conclusions. They are one story that has a conclusion, but with different characters of who are, of course, going to go in their own ways of approaching that. 
The line just keeps changing. There's just clouds outside. Ignore it. This keeps minute to minute events really interesting and really helps with the second act as well. The middle act being quite slow and boring is an issue that classic Rugrats, in my opinion, ran to heaps with really strong openings and quite strong endings, yet the middle was always kind of meh. So Rugrats, all grown up, does a much better job of strengthening that middle and bring everything together and validating all that stuff at the end. Rugrats, all grown up, is just fantastic at consistently doing that. Then you have episodes like Saving Cynthia and Miss Knows It All that just don't work. It's because you have these two op these two stories going in parallel and they don't meet together, they don't build on each other, so it just feels like you got these two plots that weren't interesting enough to make a whole episode about. And it, just, it kind of feels like you're watching filler till you get to episodes like Fear of Falling. And so when you cut from one to the next, it just feels like you're running in place because you've left the progress of this one to move progress on this one. And then you have to go back to this other one that's all the way back here and make progress on that. It just feels like you're running in place to finish off these stories that no one really cared about. Like they're fine on their own, but they just, they feel like shorts, not a full episode. Fear of Falling is probably one of the strongest episodes in the season, if not the show as a whole. It's really just, it's so good. And it's probably one of the episodes that people who complain about the show most would point to as an episode that ruined Tommy as just like... Uh. For me, one of the reasons that makes this episode so fantastic and like with Bad Aptitude is the fact <gasps> it shows the fact that these characters aren't perfect and that Tommy isn't infallible and that the characters have room to grow and to improve and they're not exactly the same as when they were babies. I know. Scandalous. These episodes really give a wonderful look at how the characters interact on a more personal note, and especially with Chucky, how he deals with the fact that Tommy isn't really the leader of the group anymore. At least that isn't his chief concern anymore. He has other things that draws his attention, and that scares Chucky, both as a member of the group, but also as Tommy's friend. For the twins, this isn't as noticeable because they've never seen Tommy in the way Chucky has. And then for Tommy, it's a learning that you can't just drop everything in pursuit of something else because your actions always affect people. And people say this is a bad show, like what? For me, I'm not really a big fan of episodes like Susie's Choice or Saving Cynthia for the main problem that they are the chief contenders of having the whole disconnected story and also I'm just not a big fan of like those characters that much. But the majority of the episodes in this season are pretty damn good and it really feels like the show is coming into its own. And then we have Interview with a Campfire Part 1 and 2. The show's magnum opus. It's, it's chef's kiss. It is, it's just, it's an absolutely fantastic episode that I would argue is the perfect like Nickelodeon two-parter out there. It's, it's just the fulfillment of everything All Grown Up was trying to be. Now, yeah, yeah, comedy is subjective and there's probably for you an episode that's funnier out there or something like that. But on a storytelling perspective, on atmosphere, on character development, on all that type of stuff, and especially fulfillment of the brief of what All Grown Up was trying to be, this episode is unbeatable. So, Interview of a Campfire follows the uh, family and gang and all those lots as they head camp every wood. Dang. <laughs> Tommy's upset. <laughs> because he wasn't able to finish his short film before going on the trip and when he comes back he's not gonna have enough time before school starts. So he's a bit bummed out, man. He decides instead to film the camp and try to bring a film out of all that. We also set up the other character stories with Dill wanting to find Bigfoot and also Chucky wanting to use the camp's myriads of different things to do to try and find something that he's good at. We are then thrown into a two-parter with, you know, the standard amount of mysteries and comedy and even a little bit of child-friendly horror to boot. Another reason I put an Interview of Campfire as part of Season 2 is for its use of Season 2's art style and more dynamic scene composition compared to Season 1, using more of the in-shots from within Tommy's camera and all that type of stuff. It was more of those types of examples. I just love the look of this special. It uses the all-grown-up style perfectly. Mixed then with the whole camping location, it just feels like a late summer setting. It's all just so perfectly executed. I love the presentation of this special. One of the things that made 
interview of a campfire so memorable to me is how well it handles atmosphere. The tone, tension, mystery, style, summer feel and all that is just constantly palatable in the moment to moment atmosphere. From scenes on stage, bushwalks, swimming, scenes at night, around the campfire or walking through the forest, the atmosphere of these episodes is so thick and so good and I love it. It gives me nostalgia for camps I never even went to. And that's all thanks to the atmosphere, the music, all that type of stuff. It gives scenes such presence. It's fantastic. The comedy is also just spot on. Like it's on a whole other level from the actual show as a whole, which is pretty rare for a Nicktoons show of this era, which were mostly pretty bad. So it could also be a fact that I grew up being on the stage and doing all that type of stuff. So just the stuff of, you know, practices going completely awful and rehearsals just flunking out of those and all that type of stuff. All that, it, it reminds me of stuff and it's always just so fantastic to me. The three new characters we get here are also really fun and add a lot to the story, especially Bean as he helps to build the core mystery. I think the reason Interview of Campfire is just so successful as an All Grown Up special is it represents the doubling down of everything All Grown Up was trying to be. A show for young teens telling stories that were impossible to tell in Rugrats, taking advantage advantage of their older demographic to tell better stories with a still great focus on comedy while using the extra time allotted by doing a two-parter to flesh out the scenario with better atmosphere and world building all while pushing the characters in way more interesting ways. It does a fantastic job of this, succeeding in everything it tries to do. It is the absolute pinnacle of this series, succeeding in everything it was trying to do. I love it. Well, there you go. That was my review of Rugrats. Or review? I don't don't call it a review. It's not a review. It's just me mostly talking. Um, I did script out all of this, but most of it ended up being ad libbed, so uh, that's why it sounds like this. Um, but yeah, sorry for the uh, the massive wait for this episode. It's been like ten months, maybe closer to eleven months. Uh, I was just really busy and kind of focused on different stuff. But hey, man, I love this show, and the main purpose of this series is to bring a bit of positivity around this show, especially now we've gotten the reboot of Rugrats, which I've actually started watching recently, it's quite good. And I would love to see a Rugrats all grown up get a reboot anyway. Anyway, we won't talk about that. Not a reboot though, next se another season. I don't want a reboot. Um, it's just, I really want to spread a bit of positivity about the show, because for me, it's better than the original, by far. A huge amount. I think it's just fantastic. And a lot of the criticism it gets is just completely unfounded, really badly thought through, really badly verbalized, and everyone just seems to agree with it. Like concepts like it ruined Tommy's character. No, it expanded Tommy's character from being one note. Like it did so much for him. And I'm just shocked that the voice actor said that as well. It's like, she of anyone should know, like this is an expansion of your character and characters don't need to expand in a positive way. Look at the Godfather movies. It's just a complete, like destruction of Michael as a character and that's fantastic not everything always needs to be positive character change sometimes it can be negative that then the story improves upon making them a better person like I feel like that's just character writing 101 but people are just so against it with these characters and I think All Grown Up did a fantastic job of it and really went out there with the character development stuff. They didn't need to do all that type of stuff and people hate them for it and that's crazy to me. But um, yeah, if you want to spread some positivity about this show, share this series, this episode, some of the previous ones with your friends. Get the word out there that this show is worth watching, especially now that we have Paramount Plus and all that type of stuff. Make people watch it. Like, do it, man. Just sit some people down, say we're going to watch one of the best modern Nickelodeon shows ever. Just do it, man. Do it. Anyway, there you go. Let me know in the comments what's your like favorite episode from season two of All Grown Up, specifically season two. We don't want anything in season three or season one. We've already done that. Season two. Uh, I'll be working on see the uh, review of season three in a little bit. Hopefully it'll be out a lot sooner than the other ones were. Anyway, catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.